looking for people to help them grow. Unfortunately, that has never worked, it just makes people feel weird and uncomfortable because they make it so obvious and these rich folks are not fools who will fall for their flattery. I have seen them try to do this stuff with other people, some of our own relatives or their friends, at events and it makes everybody around them feel really weird. I used to be very embarrassed and ashamed to be associated with them every time that they would start brown-nosing these people because I could tell that they were not only judging my parents, but they would also probably be judging us since my sister would also join in occasionally. I absolutely did not want the same kind of thing happening with my husband and his family, so when our families met, I made sure that I told everybody to keep their job descriptions low-key because the second that my parents would realize what a huge company they were all part of, they were instantly switched on their charm and try to start flattering them, probably the hopes that they could get something out of it. My husband and I have been together for three years and he has met my family several times, so he knows how to behave with them and he always made it sound like he was just an employee, so my parents treated him quite normally. My family doesn't really take that much of an interest in my life, so they have only met my husband's family once, at the time that we got engaged. So while making small talk, my husband's parents were careful enough to downplay their role in the company and since this pharmaceutical company doesn't really have anything to do with my parents' line of work, they probably did not make the connection even after knowing their last names, so we were safe. However, the photos of our wedding made their way to my parents because everybody in my husband's family reposted them and somebody decided to put them up as a post on the official social media accounts of the company as well, which is how my parents found out about which family I had married into. Literally the very same night that I got married, they started texting me and calling me to confront me about what had happened because they felt cheated. In their opinion, I should have been upfront about the kind of family that I was getting married to, but I had misled them into thinking that my husband and in-laws were just normal people. So, by skipping my wedding, they had lost a huge opportunity to start networking with people, becoming friends with my in-laws, and finding business opportunities for growth. They accused me of lying to them about how important my husband and in-laws were to their company because from the looks of it, if the wedding was significant enough to be posted on the company profile, it meant that my in-laws were pretty important to the company. My parents had also finally made that connection by googling their last names and now, they knew that this was a family business. They were really upset with me because not only had I been lying to them but I had apparently also been depriving them of business opportunities on purpose and they felt really betrayed by me. For the first couple of days after my wedding, I did not even bother responding to them because I just wanted to enjoy this newlywed phase. But I could no longer ignore them when they showed up at my house two days back, demanding answers for everything that I had been ignoring. At first, my husband and I made it very clear to them that we did not owe them any answers, and the only reason we had even invited them in was to be polite, but if they were expecting me to offer them an explanation, or to apologize to them, they were just wasting their own time. After hearing us out, my parents just turned to me and then began the emotional manipulation. They were visibly upset and they did not even bother trying to hide it, my mother in fact even started crying. I tried not to let it get to me, but it was hard because they were bringing up stuff from the past, how they had brought me up, and they expected certain things from me. Initially, I had no intention of arguing with them, I was just planning on letting them speak and then get it over with. But when they started talking about how they had always tried to be good parents to me and this is how I had repaid them, I had to call them out on that because as far as I could remember, they had mostly just tried to be good parents to my sister and for me, they had only ever done the bare minimum. So when they brought that up, I started arguing with them, and it went back and forth for a while. Ultimately, they just told me that they were really disappointed that I had cheated them out of an opportunity to become closer with such successful business people and they claimed that the fact that I had done all of this on purpose, that I had gone to such extreme to hide my husband's family from them, it just went on to show how embarrassed I was of them and they believed that even if they had been present at the wedding, it wouldn't have made a difference because I would still have been ashamed of them. They also brought up how I had definitely made sure that even my engagement was a private and intimate affair, just so that people wouldn't get to know and more than hiding my in-laws, it was just me being ashamed of my family and where I came from. These accusations did not sit right with me because honestly, that was not true. I was not ashamed of the fact that I did not come from a rich enough family like my husband did, but I was ashamed of how they acted around rich people, that was what was embarrassing. I even tried to explain that to them, but they just wouldn't listen and kept saying that my being embarrassed by them was a good enough reason for them to be upset with me right now and the fact that I was even trying to defend myself instead of apologizing to them, it showed them that they never really mattered to me. This victim mindset of theirs got under my skin after a while, and I lost my temple, so I just told them to get out of my house because I did not owe them anything, not even an explanation. It had been my mistake to invite them in in the first place, hoping that we would be able to have a civilized discussion and put an end to this, but that was never going to be possible with them. After I said that, my parents started to leave, 
and my mother was still crying but she did tell me that I had always been ashamed of my family and thought I was too good for everyone and now, it was just coming to the surface. She accused me of being just as shallow and pretentious as I thought they were, but just because I had a superiority complex, I believed that I was different, even though I really wasn't. Before leaving, they told me that they did regret not attending the wedding, but more than that, they regretted the fact that they had wasted the time trying to talk to me, especially when it was so clear that my family was never important to me at all. So now I'm wondering, Ida for never properly introducing my parents to my in-laws? Update 1, hey, everyone, thank you so much for all the lovely comments and the advice. Before I get into the update, I would just like to explain some things. I had said that I'm not particularly close to my family, and that does not just include my parents and my sister, I met most of my family. In fact, the only people invited to my wedding were a couple of my cousins, a few aunts and uncles who I get along with and that was it. They did not breathe a word about who my in-laws were my parents, even though they knew, because they understood exactly why I did not want my parents getting to know who my in-laws are and they respected that. So anyway, I had very few people from my family invited to my wedding to begin with, which is why keeping things private was not exactly a big deal for us. Anyway, now getting into how we are dealing with my parents right now. As you guys said, we have decided to cut all ties with my parents because we don't really need this sort of negativity in our lives. I don't owe them any answers at all, and you guys are right, they are the ones who choose to skip my wedding. It's not like I had refused their invites or anything, they could still have attended if they wanted to, but they thought that standing by my sister while she was getting divorced for her own fault was more important. Now they can suffer the consequences of their own actions, I don't need to feel bad for them at all. My husband and I are leaving for our honeymoon in a couple of days and when we come back, we are even going to move into a new house. It's a wedding gift from my in-laws and it was a total surprise, but it came at the right time. Because now, even if they wanted, my parents would not be able to bother us by showing up at our house, since we are going to make sure that they do not get a hold of our new address. In fact, for a while, we are planning on not giving it out to anybody else at all. We are probably just going to tell a couple of our closest friends, but nobody from my family yet. My in-laws have been incredibly supportive about whatever I'm going through right now with my family and stuff and after they had found out that my parents had shown up at my place to speak to me, they had even offered to take that post down because that was where the problem had started but honestly, this was not their fault. Besides, I was married to my husband, and I was proud to be a part of this family, not just because they are rich but because they're genuinely good people and that's a combination very difficult to find nowadays. So I did not have an issue with the post staying up. And now that my parents had already found out and were hounding me about this, I didn't see the point of taking down the post because even that would lead to people gossiping. I guess most of all, I did not want my parents to think that they were so important that we had to take that post down. They had continued to text me and call me, but last morning, I put an end to that by blocking them. I blocked my sister for good measure as well, because even though she hadn't contacted me yet, I knew that my parents would start using her to text me or get access to me somehow once they realized that I had blocked them. For those of you, who were asking, my sister was obviously not present at the wedding either. I had mentioned in my original post as well that she and I had never been very close growing up because she had always been a bit of a brat, and as we grew older, we just grew apart since we were not forced to live in the same house anymore. It wasn't as if we were on bad terms, so she had been invited, but after the divorce had been filed, I guess she decided not to show up. I was fine with that, but the only thing that I had an issue with was my parents, parents deciding that they had the right to demand that I push back my wedding by an entire year, just because she was getting divorced since she herself had cheated. I don't know for sure if my sister had been the one to put our parents up to that or not, but regardless, I knew that she would always take our parents' side, and hoping for her to do the decent thing would be futile because after all, she is our parents' child and always has been. Either way, I don't really have any contact with anybody from my family right now, apart from the people who had been present at my wedding of course. I have kept in touch with them, and I have also told them to keep me in the loop about whatever my parents are up to if it's something that could concern me. So far, I haven't heard anything funny but well, I can never be too sure with them because I don't think they will stop at anything to try and make me look at the bad guy in this situation since the last time we spoke, they were pretty serious about how disappointed they were in me. Anyway, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that nothing happens while I'm on vacation because I would seriously hate for my parents to ruin something that I have been planning and looking forward to for so many months now. I know that expecting them to stay silent and not do anything for two weeks is a lot to ask, but hopefully, they won't do anything. Update 2, hey, guys, so my husband and I returned from our honeymoon a couple of days back, and while we were away, my parents did not try to do anything, but I guess that was only because they were waiting for us to come back. Earlier today, I received a phone call from my mother-in-law, and she sounded quite worried on the phone, 
telling us both to come over as soon as we could because apparently, my parents had shamelessly shown up at their place. I don't even know how they managed to find where they live since my in-laws are pretty private people, but anyway, they must have had their ways. That was not even the biggest issue on my mind at the time because the most embarrassing thing was that they had shown up to talk about me and what I had done and as the grown-ups of the family, they needed to talk about how disappointing our behavior has been so that we didn't repeat it in the future. I don't know why my parents felt comfortable enough to behave like that because I'm a grown-up myself, not a misbehaving teenager, and even if I was one, it should have been there who should have dealt with this problem as my parents and not taken it to my in-laws. I guess they knew for a fact that my in-laws would contact us, and we would be forced to show up, so that way they would be able to reach me and that's why they chose the specific time, probably because they had somehow known that we were away on our honeymoon and would be back around this time. So one thing is for sure, somebody whom we have trusted has been speaking to my parents and telling them about what I'm up to, which is not going to fly with me but I'm gonna have to deal with that later since today was all about my parents and what happened at my in-laws place. The fact that this was happening in itself was quite embarrassing. So my husband and I quickly rushed over to his parents' place to salvage the situation before it got worse. When we got there, my parents were seated quite comfortably in their living room as if it was their own home, and they were making my in-laws equally uncomfortable by acting overly friendly, just like they usually do. My mother-in-law opened the door to us, and my father-in-law had just been sitting there quietly and smiling awkwardly at whatever my parents were trying to say to him. Since so far, they had managed to stay civil, I decided not to make a scene and I tried to keep my calm as well even though I was really upset and I had to use all my energy to keep myself from screaming at my parents. I told them that it was really not fine for them to show up at my in-law's place like this, especially when the situation that we were dealing with did not even involve them directly, it was between me and my parents. So there was really no reason for them to drag my in-laws into this without any reason, and if they wanted to speak to me, they could come to my house directly and talk it out with me. To that, they said that they had already tried that approach, but it hadn't worked out well, and now, they knew that I would show up with my husband if they visited my in-laws, which is why they had done this. I hated to admit it, but they were right about that. However, it really doesn't matter because if I did not want to speak to them, they should respect that and not try to bother me. Especially given the circumstances, where they have always put me second and did not even attend my wedding, it definitely took a lot of audacity to try and make me look like a bad guy in a situation like this where they were clearly not the victims. They said that they had visited my in-laws directly to speak to them because they knew that we would come over and then, we could all discuss this as a family and sort it out. So I had to tell them, as politely as I could, that I had no interest in sorting things out with them, and I was completely fine with not clearing the air right now since I just wanted some space from them. I tried to be calm, but I guess they could hear in my voice that I was really angry and was trying very hard to not lose it. And then my parents turned to my in-laws and started saying things like this is what we meant, this is what we have to deal with and just being weird in general. Luckily, my in-laws came to my defense almost instantly and told them that if I needed some space away from them, I definitely had my reasons and instead of forcing their presence onto me, they should be respectful of my boundaries and let it go. My parents were pretty shocked when that happened because I didn't think they were expecting my in-laws to side with me. They started looking even more surprised when my in-laws told them that they had waited for us to come over and tried their best to deal with this civilly, but now that we were all here, they wanted to let my parents know that they did not think that I had done anything wrong and now that I was a part of the family, they were going to wholeheartedly support me in whatever I did. If I chose not to have any sort of relationship with my parents, they would be respectful of that as well and would expect them to do the same if they wanted me to be happy. I guess my parents were not expecting my in-laws to be so upfront after we arrived and maybe out of shock or maybe because they did not want to get on their side, for whatever reasons, they decided to leave immediately without a word. I mean, not exactly without a word, I could still hear the mumbling under their breath, but that they kept to themselves thankfully. After they left, we sat and had a chat with my in-laws, and they told me that my parents had been really weird and clingy, which was not unexpected. They also said that they had been trying their best to turn them against me, making me look like the bad guy here, but it did not work because they already knew everything. Anyway, after that, we left too, and I'm hoping that my parents have learned their lesson now because this was just embarrassing. Update 3, Hey, Everybody. It has been three weeks since my parents showed up at my in-laws house and tried to get them on their side, but it did not work. After that, nothing really happened until this morning, when my sister reached out to me. We are currently in the process of moving houses, so I have been quite busy, which is why I hadn't been able to answer the phone when she had been calling. When I finally got the time to check my phone, I had about 10 missed calls from an unknown number, probably a burner phone, and countless messages from her. It was basically just her telling me to pick up the phone because she wanted to talk about how I was treating our parents, 
that I was breaking the family apart, and that our parents had been miserable for the past couple of weeks, ever since I had humiliated them in front of my in-laws. After reading those texts, I realized that this number belonged to my sister and I decided not to call back but I did not block her because I wanted to know what else she had to say about this. So I texted her back, saying that none of that was my fault, and if they really thought that it was, then it meant that they were purely delusional. I told her that our parents had skipped my wedding on purpose for her sake, and they had shown up at my in-laws place themselves and gotten humiliated, so I was not responsible for that mess. After I texted her back, she sent me a really long message, saying that I had made them very unhappy, and they were already having a hard time dealing with the fact that she was going through a divorce, even though she didn't really cheat on her husband, but in spite of that, he was accusing her of it. They were having a difficult time as it was, and on top of that, I decided to add to it. She called me heartless, selfish, and whatnot but I just told her that this family needs a serious lesson in taking accountability, and I'm glad that they are all facing the consequences of their actions right now because it's quite necessary for them to learn that they can't get away with everything. And then, I added that especially she, of all people, needed to know that. Obviously, I was referring to the fact that she had cheated and yet was acting like she was innocent, so she naturally got really upset about that and started going off on me, cursing at me through texts and stuff, and that's when I knew that I was done. So I blocked that number, and I went back to ignoring them altogether. And now, I'm never gonna be responding to them again because this was the last conversation that I had to have with any of them. I have said whatever I had to say. Update 4, Hey, Guys. So it's been almost a year since I got married, and I just thought that I would post a little update here, to tell you guys what I have been up to. I haven't been in touch with my parents ever since I moved houses and it's been quite a relief. And recently, I also managed to find out who exactly had been telling my parents about what I was up to back then, it was one of my cousins who had been speaking to my sister, and I have cut them off now. That's actually what reminded me to post here. Apparently, this cousin was quite close to my sister as well, and just couldn't help themselves, because they thought they were doing something good by trying to help a family reconcile. Anyway, we don't speak to that cousin anymore, and neither do we have anything to do with my family, apart from the few people that I trust. From what I know, my sister decided to move to another city just a couple of months after her divorce was finalized and my parents also decided to finally sell their store, so they could move away with my sister and start something new. Honestly, I wish them all the best, just so that they continue to stay out of my hair. I'm not sure how much longer I'll be able to hold them off from reaching out to me though, because my husband and I are planning to start a family, and I'm sure that once I announce my pregnancy, they'll be back again. But we will cross that bridge once we get to it, for now, we're just planning. My husband and I recently celebrated our first anniversary together, and we are quite happy with our lives and are also looking forward to becoming parents soon.